um, Hawking radiation is a phenomenon associated with black holes. So black holes are the most extreme objects in nature. So to describe what a black hole is, imagine standing on the surface of the Earth and jumping up. So you jump up and then you fall back down because gravity pulls the Earth's gravity pulls you back down to Earth. Now imagine you jump even harder so the speed at which you're jumping is higher and what will happen is that you'll jump up further you'll go higher but again you'll fall back to earth now there's a particular speed called escape velocity at which if you jump at that speed you'll manage to escape earth's gravity and go into outer space. So this is what rockets do, for example. And uh, at that speed, uh, and higher than that speed, you, you'll, go, you'll manage to escape the body, in this example, Earth, and go to outer space. But there's a particular object called the black hole, such that the escape velocity, the velocity, the speed at which you have to um, jump or to fire your rocket to escape that object is actually higher than the speed of light. And that's called the black hole. So that's why people say that not even light can come out of a black hole. So as I said before, black holes are extremely um, strange objects and hard to imagine precisely for this reason. And so just to give you an idea of um, how extreme these objects are, imagine if um, the Earth was a black hole, what would it look like? So for Earth to be a black hole, you have to take everything uh, on Earth, you have to take the whole Earth and squash it into a ball this size, approximately one and a half centimetres in diameter. So if you put all of Earth into just this little ball, that would be a black hole. It, it's an object so dense, the gravity is becoming strong. Or put another way, if you want to keep the size of the Earth fixed, um, for the Earth to be a black hole, its mass has to be 2,000 times larger, sorry, 2,000 times the mass of the Sun. So, um, and the reason for that is so the gravity is again very strong. So um, this sounds like a crazy sort of object that you wouldn't think exists in nature, but in fact these objects do exist in nature. They're at the center of um, galaxies and um, even recently two black holes were observed to collide with one another and the way this was observed was through gravitational waves. This was a very significant uh, result that was highlighted in the media. So black holes do exist, but how do they form? Well, the way they form is that um, the star is radiating light and energy because nuclear fusion is taking place within the star. Now, once um, hydrogen and helium runs out within the star's core, the, um, the process of nuclear fusion terminates. And what happens is that the outward pressure inside the sun suddenly stops and gravity kicks in and pulls the, all of the matter in the sun towards the center and the sun collapses down to a black hole if the sun is massive enough. It's not necessarily the case that all suns, uh, once the fuel has run out, all of the um, stars uh, go into black holes, but if the star is massive enough, then it collapses to a black hole. And um, so what I've said so far is all classical, um, but we also know that there's the quantum regime particles at the very microscopic length scales are described by quantum physics. So um, the, uh, the reason why quantum physics should play a role here is because 
black holes, as I said, uh, are, are extreme and they, they lie in a regime whereby both gravity and quantum physics are appreciable. We can't neglect either. There's strong gravity, but also there's the distances are so small that we expect quantum physics to play some role as well. And this is where um, Hawking radiation comes in. So Hawking radiation is perhaps the most famous example of the interplay between gravity and quantum physics. Um, and this is one reason why black holes are sometimes referred to as laboratories for quantum gravity there. Besides the Big Bang, which gave rise to the universe, black holes are the only objects we have in nature where we can test our ideas uh, on quantum gravity. So um, what's Hawking radiation? Well, imagine you have a black hole and Hawking radiation is simply the statement that I said before, classically, nothing comes out of a black hole. Once you put quantum physics into the picture, in fact, black holes radiate. They, they give off energy and that's Hawking radiation. So before I said the black hole, nothing can come out of a black hole. Now I'm saying something can come out of the black hole. So where's the explanation for this Hawking radiation? The explanation is that in quantum physics, you have a way of describing what energy is, what the energy of a particle is. And before the star collapses, you have one way of prescription of defining energy. After the star collapses and forms a black hole, your space has changed. It's no longer the same space. The star has changed to a black hole. And that means that in the latter picture, when you have a black hole, what you mean by energy is different to what you meant by the energy of the particle before the black hole formed. And this, this relation about what you meant by energy before collapse and what you meant by energy after collapse is precisely what gives rise to Hawking radiation. So you can think of it as um, a particle on the in the lying at the center of a seesaw and in quantum physics this particle will, will fluctuate and you can think of black hole form formation as the seesaw suddenly uh, being changed into a different shape and so those oscillations of that little particle will change because you're changing the surrounding space that's essentially the explanation of Hawking radiation and where it comes um, from. So um, because the in this quantum picture now black holes have um, a giving uh, so because in this quantum in this quantum uh, picture black holes are now radiating energy. It means we can associate temperature to them, just as um, if you heat up a piece of metal, it's going to give off energy and radiate. It has a certain temperature. We can measure the temperature of a hot object. We can measure the temperature of a black hole from the emitted radiation. And so now we have this picture whereby black holes have temperature and they're giving off energy. If they're radiating energy, it means that they're becoming smaller just because energy is conserved. And so a black hole that started off with a particular mass is shrinking and shrinking. And eventually we don't know what will happen. The black hole will become so small that we can no longer use our approximation methods. But one particular um, scenario is that the black hole disappears. Now this poses a theoretical question. Things went into the black hole. The black hole radiates and the only thing we know about this radiation is the temperature, which is just a single number. And um, we don't know anything else and then the black hole disappears. But this 
poses a problem. And the reason this poses a problem is that things go into the black hole, information goes in, but all we get out is a single number and the mass of the black hole. So we know the total energy of what went in plus a single number, that's the temperature. And in quantum physics, this can't happen. In quantum physics, we should be able to recover the information that went in. This is called unitarity. And the, the puzzle associated with this lack of information is called the information paradox. So um, a current area of research is to precisely explain what happens to the information and there are uh, various proposals recently um, one being the interaction of particles is important and this changes the picture this the, the simple scenario that I gave is modified by interactions um, another proposal is that um, there are other charges besides the mass there are other descriptions of the black hole that play a role um, and this is current research regarding Hawking radiation.